Hackers, welcome back. AWS, Amazon Web Services. This is something that's owned by Amazon that makes Amazon a lot of money. In fact, 3.54 billion dollars. So what exactly is it? Well, let's break apart the acronym. Amazon, Amazon owns it. Web, these are services for the internet or for the web. This was created back in 2006, and so the name is actually a little outdated. It should be Amazon Cloud Services because really they're services for the cloud. But the idea of having a smartphone or having a tablet or smart fridge, these were ideas that I'm sure existed, but they weren't mainstream yet, and so hence it was called Amazon Web Services. Now, the competitor, Google Cloud Platform, they used cloud in their name because they were created a little bit later on and were able to come up with a name that made a little bit more sense. But Amazon Web Services, they're services that help you bring things to the internet or to the web. And you might be thinking, what, what kind of services do they have? Well, they group it into categories, and so they have services that compute things for you. They have machine learning services. They have storage services. So think of this as your Google Drive, things, places you would store things. They have database services. They have analytics services. These are all things that are good if you develop applications on the web. What actually are the services? Well, the most common one or the first one people usually learn about is the EC2. So what does EC2 stand for? It's Elastic Compute Cloud. So EC2, it's like Elastic Compute Compute Cloud, since there's two C's, they double it up there and call it an EC2 versus an ECC. But Elastic Compute Cloud, like what does that mean? Well, starting with compute, compute means it's a service that can compute things. Just like you compute with your computer, you can compute with this service. So think of it, it's this machine that can compute things. The computation could be adding two numbers, it could be turning one piece of data into another piece of data. It's a machine. Cloud means it lives on the cloud. It's somewhere in the cloud, so Elastic Compute Cloud. We know the compute, we know the cloud. Elastic, what does that mean? Well, the service allows you to easily reserve computers, and so it's allowing you to reserve these machines that live in the cloud that compute things. Elastic means you could reserve 10 computers, you could reserve five computers, and that number can change at any time. The number of reserved instances, and so you may have heard of EC2 instances, another way to call them. The number of machines you have can change depending on how much traffic you have, depending on a bunch of different factors. Usually when you go to the Mac store or the Windows store, you go, you buy a computer, you buy that computer and you own that computer. EC2 is a service because you're reserving a computer on the fly and how many you rent can change over time. Another thing that makes this elastic is you can change the specs of that computer at any time you want. You can give it a bunch more RAM, a bunch more CPU, you can give it anything you want, whatever specs, you can spec it out or scale back down to the least amount of machine possible. This is different from going to the store and buying a computer or buying a server that you need to run your application because once you buy that machine, you're kind of stuck with some of the specs. You can't change them on the fly. So Elastic Compute Cloud, this is an Amazon service that allows you to rent computers on the fly that will compute things in the cloud and you can elastically change what their specs are, how many you have reserved, and a bunch of different factors about those machines. You may have heard of an EC2 server, and so this is the same thing as an EC2, but all you've done is put code on it that can serve requests. And so a request comes into that EC2 computer that lives in the cloud, it's elastically rented, it can compute things, and it does something with a given request and sends back out some data. Now the EC2 is the base of everything at Amazon. Everything is really an EC2, but with different business logic built on top of it. But how do you run something on this machine? How do I get something onto my EC2? Well, one way is you can SSHN, use Vim, create a file remotely, and write the code directly on the EC2 to serve the request or whatever your application is. And while that is possible, it's not something you really want to do. Who wants to code in Vim? I'm sure there's people out there, but not me. I would rather build my application locally, dockerize it, or put it in some kind of container format, and then ship it to my EC2. In order to do that, you'll have to use a service called ECR or ECS. And so these are other services that live in the realm of AWS. But let's go check out ECR. So ECR, again, a really big confusing name 
name, Elastic Container Registry. With ECR, you dockerize your image locally. So I have my Java Docker image. So I build this Java application. It looks great. It works perfect. There are no bugs whatsoever. I dockerize it and then I put it on ECR. And so this is a registry where I can put my Docker images and then I'm gonna use a different service to actually deploy it to my EC2 instances. Once I put my Docker image on ECR, and so I have a reference in Amazon for what image I want to deploy to my servers, my EC2 instances, then I'm gonna use a service called Elastic Container Service. This is gonna allow me, oh, there's a nice little video with a stick figure. I'm gonna use the Elastic Container Service to deploy it to those EC2s. And there are a bunch of other things in here. It's the Elastic Container Service. Elastic means you can change it whenever you want. Super easy to change. Container, you're running containers, and so Docker containers created from your Docker image that's living in ECR. Service, everything's a service on Amazon. But service here means you're running it within something called a service that will then have tasks in it that are actually running your containers. And so the first thing you do would be to create a cluster. Inside the cluster, you'll create a service. Inside the service, you'll create a task. And in order for that task to be created, it needs to have a task definition that will have a reference to your Docker image that's in ECR. The ECS service will then be linked to our EC2 instance via a target group. So that's one way to deal with Amazon and work with a few of the services. Another route is to use Fargate instead of EC2. And Fargate is actually an EC2, but you as a user don't have to configure as much. The reason I would use an EC2 is if I really cared about that machine. I wanted to control all the specs of that machine. I would wanna know exactly what software is on that machine. But most of us, we just wanna deploy something. We don't really care what code's on the machine as long as our code's on there and it's running. So then I might use Fargate. Fargate is something you use in combination with ECS, but you don't have to configure as much. All you have to do is provide it your Docker image, and it will just run your application in the form of tasks. So instead of running your Docker containers on EC2, you'll run tasks on Fargate. Now at some point in your career, you may have heard of AWS going down, AWS East going down, and it breaking like half the internet. AWS East and West refer to the different regions of AWS. AWS has regions based on where those resources live. And so your EC2 server or your EC2 instance, where does that live? Where do copies of your Docker image live? Well, they live somewhere, and that somewhere is in a region of the world. North America, South America, Europe. And you can switch between the different regions by just clicking the arrow up here, and you can go to Ohio. You can go to Sydney. And all you have to do is click it, and now you're gonna be working with resources that are in that region. But a lot of times, the region you put your resources in, that can matter because you might have all your customers in New York, so obviously you're gonna wanna put your servers in New York. You're gonna wanna put them in US East 1. So when people say, oh, US East went down, they're saying the resources in those regions went down. Now many decide to put resources in both US East as well as US West. This is because if one of those regions goes down, you're fine. You can also use another AWS service to configure which requests go to which resources. So so say you have customers in California, well you're going to want to send them to the US West resources, but if you have a customer in New York, you'll want to send them to the US East resource. If you wanted to do something like that, you could use something called Route 53, and this service would allow you to configure something like that. And so it's an AWS service that works with other AWS service because the whole thing is owned by Amazon. In fact, so much of it is owned by Amazon that you can create your own DNS name here. Register domains, register your ice cream restaurant domain right here in Amazon. In addition to using something like EC2 or Fargate or that dockerized way of writing code, we also have something called Lambda. And Lambda is serverless. And really what this means is that you think about the servers less. All you do is create a function and you add a trigger to that function and whatever that trigger is triggered, 
the function executes. You don't have to worry about servers at all. And you pay Amazon based on how many times your function gets executed. So obviously if you have millions of customers, Lambda may not be the best place. So here's our Lambda function, here's the code, and I just write the code in this. I could write the code right here on Amazon. But instead of doing this, you can also upload a zip file with your code. That way you can work with it locally and not have to deal with Amazon's version of a code editor. Then to use it, we have these triggers. And of course these triggers are other Amazon Web Services because they own everything. And those destinations, meaning like if I trigger this Lambda function and I want it to notify people, I might use an SNS topic or have it trigger another Lambda function. There's lots of different things you can do, but again, Amazon owns all. There's another service that is called CloudWatch and this one is literally just logs. Logs for every AWS service they get plopped into here. And there's a bunch of things you can do in order to monitor your AWS services right here in CloudWatch. But this is just a monitor service. Like it looks really scary, but it's just for logging. So Amazon is all about changes to your infrastructure on the fly. And so because of that, they created a service called CloudFormation. And this is just an infrastructure as code tool. What it allows you to do is create a configuration file that spins up all of your resources. So let's say I wanted to create a service inside of ECS and I wanted to put a task inside of that. It's gonna have a task definition. And I also wanted to link it to some EC2 instances and I wanted to create that. Maybe I wanted to create a log group with cloud formation. Maybe I needed to also create a cluster for that service that's running in ECS to run in. Maybe I also wanted to create a load balancer. If I wanted multiple EC2 instances, I would likely need a load balancer in order for the requests to be balanced between these different EC2s. And so I might create that, and then I might create a target group. All I'd have to do is create this configuration file, put my resources in it, give it to cloud formation, and it will form my resources in the cloud cloud formation. Now this is overwhelming. There are so many different services on AWS. Like I feel like there's over a hundred, close to 200 services. And you're thinking, where do I start? Like, how do I even? Well, one way is just dockerize something and put it on AWS. Another way is you can create something called an Alexa skill. And so Amazon Alexa, maybe you have one at home, but it's a voice assistant that Amazon's built. And of course, if it's something Amazon built, you're going to use AWS in order to build things for it. So if someone tells you they know AWS, ask them, what services do you use? Because it's something that's so big, no one knows AWS as a whole, besides the people that maybe work at Amazon themselves. But most people work with a handful of services and know those services really well. All right, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned something new, subscribe and give it a like. Good luck building something on Amazon and I'll see you soon. Happy coding.